video lesson, we looked at using multidimensional arrays and populating an array as we created it and modifying those records. But the records we populated are not in any specific order. We want to be able to alphabetize the student records based on last name using that multidimensional array. Now we saw with the one dimensional array, we could use array.sort method to do that, but that does not work on multidimensional arrays. We did, however, also look at in that one dimensional array on sorting at how to do a bubble sort to sort that if we didn't have array.sort available to us. So we're going to use the bubble sort in this project as well to sort our array data by last name and keeping the data grouped together. And bubble sorts work great when you have a small amount of data, probably less than a thousand records, maybe less than 2,000 records. Anything beyond that, though, there's probably other algorithms that are better for sorting, such as a binary sort. Let's go ahead and modify our code to add a sort routine. Let me scroll up here to remind you that we had a, an array called students that had 10 rows and three columns. The amount of ro rows are inconsequential because we could have a hundred rows or a thousand rows and we want to be able to sort all of those. But notice that we have three columns. And so column zero is the first name, column one is the last name, that's what we want to sort on, and column two is the major. So I'm going to scroll down and we're going to add another function. We'll start with private. We're not going to return anything. Rather we're just going to sort the array as in place, but we're going to say uh, sort students will be the name of this. I'm not going to pass it anything, so we're just going to use the class level array. So I have empty parentheses. And then we're going to use a bubble sort. Remember a bubble sort was nested loops. So we're going to say for int i equals zero and i is going to be less than our array of students and I want to get length of dimension zero and I'm going to do a minus two here because we the get length would be the number of rows minus one would be the last element I want to do the second to last element because I don't need to compare that last element with anything other than what was compared with before it gets that last element. And then we'll do an I++. That's our outer loop. Now I need an inner loop. And we'll make this one have a counter of J. It's going to equal I plus one. So we're looking at whatever record comes after I. And here we're going to do while J, let's see a semicolon, J is less than students dot get length dimension zero and here we'll go to that last element which should be minus one and I want to increment j within that loop we want to compare element i to element j and we're going to compare the last names so if students element i comma one remember we want to use since these are strings when you string compare so string dot compare student element students element i comma one and then also want to compare that with students element j comma one And if that is greater than zero, meaning, meaning the i is larger than the j, I could have done the reverse and done j first and then i and done less than zero. But if that's the case, meaning that, that j is going to be less than i, we want to move j up. And we're going to create a, so I'm just going to create a little string array here. It's going to be temp. equals new string and actually I don't have to, we're going to recreate this every time I'm going to move this to up here so let's create our array 
and it's going to have three elements in it. And then I can say temp sub zero equals students i sub zero temp sub one equal students i comma one and temp element two equals students i comma two and then i'm going to say students sub i comma zero equals students element j comma zero and i'm going to copy that and paste and let's just change these zeros to ones and twos So that now has repopulated row I with the data from row J, and now I need to populate row J with the data that we put in temp, which is from row I. So here we'll say students J comma zero equals temp element zero. And again, I'm just gonna copy that. We'll paste and we'll change these zeros to ones and twos. So that's our method for sorting the students. Now we want to call that sort students every time we display the students. So I'm going to come back up here to our update records. And let's just call sort students. And in the next video, we're going to bring the students in from a data file and populate the multidimensional array from a data file. And we're going to use something called, called the split method of strings to be able to do that. It's going to be a comma separated data file. So that should sort our students every time we load new students in and display the students. Let's test this. And now we're getting Brown, Franklin, Harrison, Jackson, Perez, Swanson, Turner, Vance, Veracruz, and Blackburn. We didn't get the last one. So let's go back and look at why that happened. And the reason was we used a less than and subtracted two and a less than and subtracted one. I was thinking less than or equal to. So we can just change these values to a minus one and just a zero here. So I would have left those as minus two and minus one if we had done less than or, or equal two in these two cases. Let's try this again. And now we're getting in the court correct order. Blackburn, Brown, Franklin, Harrison, Direct, Jackson, Perez, Swanson, Turner, Vance, and Veracruz. Let's change these records and we'll see these shift again because we're gonna change the last names on some of these. And now we got Brown, Garcia, Harrison, Jackson, Jones, Perez, Robert, Stanford, Turner, and Vance. And again, I can cycle through these. So the order is represented here in these buttons by our sorted record. So last record, in this case, would be Philip Vance. First record, Michaela Brown. That is how we can sort multidimensional arrays using the bubble sort. As I said, in the next video, we'll look at how to read data into that multidimensional array from a data file. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the C Sharp Xamarin Programming Cohort playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.